Good morning and welcome. Today is uh, a solemnity in the church, the solemnity, the martyrdom of St. Peter and St. Paul. And uh, so we're going to have two readings plus the gospel. We're going to have the creed and the gloria. And uh, we're going to have incense this morning as well. But we'll try not to uh, belabor the mass so people that I know that may have a schedule to keep immediately after mass. But nonetheless, so uh, just so you're prepared for, uh, for, uh, for mass this morning and the different parts of the mass this morning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. My brothers and sisters in Christ, as we celebrate the beautiful witness of Peter and Paul, we take a moment now to acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the fall. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, 
and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who on the solemnity of the apostles, Peter and Paul, give us the noble and holy joy of this day, grant, we pray, that your church may in all things follow the teaching of those through whom she received the beginnings of right religion. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, King Herod laid hands upon some members of the church to harm them. He had James, the brother of John, killed by the sword. And when he saw that this was pleasing to the Jews, he proceeded to arrest Peter also. It was the Feast of Unleavened Bread. He had he had him taken into custody and put in prison under the guard of four squads of four soldiers each. He intended to bring him before the people after Passover. Peter thus was being kept in prison, but prayer by the church was fervently being made to God on his behalf. On the very night before Herod was to bring him to trial, Peter, secured by double chains, was sleeping between two soldiers, while outside the door, guards kept watch on the prison. Suddenly, the angel of the Lord stood by him, and a light shone in the cell. He tapped Peter on the side and awakened him, saying, Get up, quickly. The chains fell from his wrist. The angel said to him, Put on your belt and your sandals. He did so. Then he said to him, Put on your cloak and follow me. So he followed him out, not realizing that what was happening through the angel was real. He thought he was seeing a vision. They passed the first guard, then the second, and came to the iron gate leading out to the city, which opened for them by itself. They emerged and made their way down a valley, and suddenly the angel left him. Then Peter recovered his senses and said, Now I know for certain that the Lord sent his angel and rescued me from the hand of Herod, from all that the Jewish people were expecting. The word of the Lord. The Lord delivered me from all my fears. The Lord delivered me from all my fears. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be ever in my mouth. Let my soul glory in the Lord. The lowly will hear me and be glad. The Lord delivered me from all my fears. Glorify the Lord with me. 
Let us together extol his name. I sought the Lord, and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. The Lord delivered me from all my fears. Look to him that you may be radiant with joy and your face may not blush with shame. When the poor one called out, the Lord heard, and from all his distress, he saved him. The Lord delivered me from all my fears. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. Taste and see how good the Lord is. Bless the man who takes refuge in him. The Lord delivered me from all my fears. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. I, Paul, am already being poured out like a libation, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have competed well, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. From now on, the crown of righteousness awaits me, which the Lord, the just judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but to all who have longed for his appearance. The Lord stood by me and gave me strength, so that through me the proclamation might be completed, and all the Gentiles might hear it. And I was ref rescued from the lion's mouth, the Lord will rescue me from every evil threat and will bring me safe to his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. 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 You are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the never world shall not prevail against it. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus went into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said in reply, you're the Christ the Son of the living God. Jesus said to him in reply, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father. And so I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven, Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. We uh, live under the power of God's providence. God's providence. Uh, we have spoken, myself and Father Braxton, a number of times on this truth that God provides, 
right? God will provide, God's providence. And in the first two readings, we hear uh, about the persecution of the church and Peter's arrested and he's got four guards and double sets of chains and they know they're not planning on him getting away. And by God's providence, what happens? He gets out, he escapes. The angel of the Lord leads him and Peter continues his mission. And then in St. Paul's letter to Timothy, he says, the Lord will rescue me from every evil threat and will bring me safe. Now we read these two passages of scripture and we stand here aware of the fact that Paul was beheaded in Rome and Peter was crucified in Rome. So did God's providence just run out? And this really should draw us back into this question of God's will and God's plan and how it unfolds. And it doesn't always, we don't always have the angel come deliver us from prison. Peter and Paul, witnesses to the power and the providence and the love of God. When that providence brought them to suffering and imprisonment, to danger, Paul goes through his life experiences at one time and he says, I was shipwrecked, I was stoned, I was beaten, I was left for dead, I was abandoned, I was lied about, I was this, that. He's just like, you know, God, if that's how you treat your friends, you know, uh, a famous saint once said, no wonder you have so few of them. Uh, but God's providence is present all the while in Paul's life. And God's providence is present in Peter's life. But we recognize that they both ended their life with a supreme gift. And what was the gift that Peter and Paul were both given? The opportunity to imitate their Lord in laying down their life for the faith. Do you see the gift there? Do you see the gift that God provided? And Paul alludes to this. The Lord will rescue me from every evil threat and will bring me safely to his kingdom. We don't always understand God's providence, but if we are living in God's will, God's providence will be present to us and, and we, can, we, can, we can pick up on it. It's mysterious. Who is Jesus Christ to you? Who is he to you? And in some respects, I, I know this sounds maybe disrespectful or flippant or something. I don't care who he is to your neighbor or the person in the pew by you. Who is he to you? And how do you get to know him? Personally intimately, experientially, and trust in his providence. Today, we celebrate the martyrdom, the witness of Peter and Paul, and God's providence in their life, and the gift that he gave them, as mysterious as it is to suffer and to bleed in witness to their faith in who Jesus is. May God provide for us and may we receive what comes to us from his hand of providence. Today we pray the creed and we'll pray the Apostles' Creed as we celebrate two apostles this morning, 
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Now with every confidence in God's providence, we make our prayers and our petitions. We pray for Pope Francis and for Bishop Kinnaman and for all who have been given leadership that they have the courage that Peter and Paul displayed. We pray to the Lord that we would have a, a deep personal familiarity with, with the writings of St. Paul and the writings of St. Peter, the teachings of the church. We pray to the Lord. For a renewal of the church throughout the world, but particularly here in South Mississippi and in our own hearts and minds, we pray to the Lord. We pray for all who will be traveling this week, those who will be vacationing, visiting with family and friends, celebrating the uh, independence of our nation, that there be safe travel and, and uh, good recreation, we pray to the Lord. We also remember uh, Virgie Krauss, and we pray for the repose of her soul, the consolation of her friends, and all who have died. May they know the love and mercy of God, we pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we ask and we seek and we knock, trusting in your providence, we pray that we may always remain in your will as Peter and Paul did through Christ our Lord.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the prayers of the apostles, O Lord, accompany the sacrificial gift that we present to your name for consecration. And may their intercession make us devoted to you in celebration of the sacrifice through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for by your providence, the blessed apostles Peter and Paul bring us joy. Peter, foremost in confessing the faith, Paul, its outstanding preacher, Peter, who established the early church from the remnant of Israel, Paul, master and teacher of the Gentiles that you call, and so each, in a different way, gathered together the one family of Christ and revered together throughout the world, they share one martyr's crown. And therefore, with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Louis, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and her blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogenus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers and all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, 
the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants, and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, the spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with a sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, in all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace. I give you look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us all reach out peace.
my Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, O Lord, who have been renewed by this sacrament, so to live in the church that persevering in the breaking of the bread and in the teachings of the apostles, we may be one heart and one soul made steadfast in your love through Christ 
our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorify the Lord with your lives. Thanks be to God. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Lady of the Gospel.